packs. Welcome back to ESL 1 Katowice 2018. Day three is almost at an end. We have just one more game to go. Two fantastic performances, two MVP performances from both of the teams so far. Who was your standout player? Let us know. Uh, you can actually make that decision yourself by voting on the MVP. A little bit early, I know, but go to the link at the bottom of the screen and check out exactly how it all works. A $50,000 Mercedes-Benz car could be won by the MVP of this tournament, or will be one, but you will help decide who that is. Is it is it Eternal Envy? Is it Puppy? The underrated MVP star of Team Secret uh, has become as a bit of a meme now on the show. Uh, we're back at the panel and these sensible guys are gonna tell you exactly how game three is gonna pan out, or are they? It's a tricky decision, a tricky question, because we've had two very competitive games that have gone both ways, Alan. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And you know what, going into the second draft, I am banning this Caudal Hero. Will's point about Storm and Ursa not being the best out here is well taken. That was actually the second largest net worth deficit that we have seen in two th over 2,000 pro games. It's in the top 20 in 16,000 pro games since TI5, <laughs> and they still couldn't end the game against that damn Coddle. <laughs> the other thing, by the way, if I'm, if, I am, if I'm second pick, I am banning it. Little interesting tidbit, uh, 39 out of the 43 teams so far that have had selection priority have opted for first pick. Mm. And that's indicative of a meta where there are a small set of heroes that we feel are just very, very strong. Indeed. Uh, Blitz, what do you expect in game three? I don't know. Seeker just... It's hard, they're, isn't it? They're bosses. The, I am like, I see Storm lose every game here, and then they're just like, well, let's first pick. Let's first to it. And I don't know other teams that do stuff like that. They, they like fully shifted over to pick heroes that aren't good, but it perfectly countered what Fnatic does. Yeah, they're just like, it's really cool. Okay, guys, we know what Fnatic do. They try to kill us. They're not interested. They're just going to push the pace and just go around the map killing. We need to match that. We need to just go around the map and kill them back. And that's exactly what they did. I think they had an above average laning phase too. Mm. Like, I, I don't know if ABBA is supposed to crush TB that hard. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty smart, wasn't it? It was, it was really smart, yeah. Right, so the I, I agree that you should ban Coddle because I think it doesn't really, didn't fit Fnatic's lane idea. It fit their like mid game idea, but not their lane. They need something that does both. Um, so I think just get it out of there. But if Secret keeps banning these like lane winners into mid game anchors, then then all of the banning prowess comes down to Fnatic. Like they have to get rid of all of these other heroes that are very good or fit them into their strategy. Plenty of thought for both teams heading into this third draft of the day. Uh, a, good, a quick reminder for those of you at home who have just tuned in or have tuned in late to this day. You've missed some great Dota already. Uh, and we're in the final game of the day, the very final game of the day. This one game decides who makes the top four guaranteed. And the road doesn't end there either for either team because the loser of this game also stays in. They're in the side, the top six. They will go to the quarterfinals. But Will said it earlier, you know, the best strategy as a coach is carry on winning, isn't it, Will? Just keep winning. Secret are like, oh, guys, for God's sake, he's like, guys, come on, man. We talked about this. <laughs> wow. Said, don't lose. Keep winning. I, I, I feel like if I'm fanatic, I'm scared right now because game one, they played amazing. They stomped Secret. And the game two secret just was like, okay, let's uh, we know what to do, and they did it. And now Fnatic's like, okay, do we can we shift things so that we can get it back towards game one, or are they just gonna slightly pivot to what we're how we're adjusting and stomp us? Like that's what feels scary. And and they even had a good late game draft as evidenced by the fact that they couldn't easily close it out with a 50k advantage. But if they feel like that and they still lost, then that's got to be terrifying. But maybe maybe they feel like, you know what, if our laning stage just went a little better, we yeah. would have won. Maybe they feel like that as well. So, I think that's right. So I, many ways it can go. I, I think just a, a little cleanup. I, I don't think that Abaddon is supposed to is supposed to be taking Terrorblade's Tier 2 tower at 844. Um, I, you know, it might be a bit of an advantage, but that I think the execution in the laning phase is the biggest thing that you look at. And Paul, what you were saying about the stakes of this game, you know, it, it also bears mentioning that we said that this field was a little bit more upset prone, a lot more upset prone than Genting. You're looking now at playing a team like VP, potentially in the quarterfinals. Yep. You want that buy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we should mention, actually, you've probably seen it on the ticker at the bottom of the screen. 
Uh, but VG are now the only team without a single defeat at this uh, event. They are now 5-0 and zero after winning against Virtus Pro. So they are through to the semi-finals. VG. Yep. They have joined Tier 1 according to Will. Yeah, they're in. Can I? But that's they've won twice against top teams. That's can I double now, right? a little bit? Can I you can gloat, you can gloat all you like. Yeah, you all the way back to Genting said, VG are on the verge of joining that top four and making it a top five. Didn't in that same sense though, you talked about how great Fnatic was. So I mean, I don't no, know, I, man. I, I, I think I still, I still, I still believe that. I think Fnatic is in the, is is my sixth team on that list, and I still think EG, I still think EG could turn it around. Alan, be real with us. What? Uh, I'm gonna ask you again. Who <laughs> who's not joining them? Optic. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's really easy when they're already eliminated. Yeah. Let's... Wow. Um, Complexity. Next tournament, oh, right? I'm gonna I ask you day one. I'm gonna write I a lot of things down. This is some real bias. And uh, plus, NA is low hanging fruit right now. You gotta go higher. How dare you? Like you'll be saying effect. Next. How dare you? I I, I am I, I am a little bit bearish on Navi after this tournament. It's got to be said. I think it's you give it a little bit of a pass for the new roster, sure. but that that scared me. The last few series we've seen Navi play in have not looked good. Tough draws though. Tough yeah. draws yeah. here. Man, Alan yeah. with the hot takes. Ooh. <laughs> Careful, somebody's gonna make you, a Reddit thread about what you just said. Yo, that's you for sure. asked, okay? I, and I, just, I guarantee there will be a Reddit thread I'm about no, what I'm <laughs> honestly, I did not I'm much. honestly just messing with you. I know you are. It's all good. We'll just we'll just clip the bit where he said optic are rubbish, and that will be the one that goes on Reddit. Oh God, Peter Careful, is already tweeting. Don't say clipped. <laughs> the best thing is context never works. So <laughs> <laughs> context and social media do yeah. not go together. Friends. The important thing is I just got to get you to. Say the words. Exactly. In the right then... order. <laughs> yep. Or the wrong order. Uh, into the bands we go then for this final game of the day. Fnatic versus Team Secret. And uh, yeah, dominant first game for Fnatic. Dominant second game from Secret. All square as we head into the third. I like the Rubik ban from Fnatic here. Um, it's obviously super comfort. Yep, Sir Hero helps them win the laning stage. And Secret going with same bands mm -hmm. so far. Yep. I think their third was Sand King in the previous match. Who that bans is, Tiny? That is correct. Okay, Jaru. I think, boy, oh boy. I think Tiny might make it through here. Either Tiny or Coddle is making it through. Will wow. Fnatic let the Coddle go, though? Or will they Coddle again and just pick a better second support? And, and Fnatic will Fnatic will first, first pick Tiny, I think, if it's left in the pool. Yep. And if Coddle gets through and Fnatic picks it, uh, Nice Soccer's still there as well, so maybe they don't want to pick Coddle for that reason as well. Last game they banned uh, okay. Night Stalker as their third to allow the Coddle pick. All right, so I, I think Secret obviously you make the decision. Ooh. This is now I think Secret if you're hmm. if you're in the Secret position, you have a lot of pressure on you now to pick the Coddle in the first two, because that Razor Coddle combination is something that Fanatics is very comfortable with. It's something again the Razor gives you the dominant presence presence in the laning phase, and the Coddle makes it very hard to end the game if the other team gets ahead in the mid game. The other, the other tricky thing about this first pick poser is that they, they're not one of those teams that play in other lanes usually either. So it's a very obvious envy pick, isn't it? Yes. But again, they're, they they kind of have two looks. If they don't have envy on Terrorblade, Razor's the hero, man. It just fits so well because the rest of their hero pool is so wide open to run alongside the Razor. What do you make of this Shaker Druid? The Lone Druid is, uh, we, we keep saying it's sort of bad against Razor because Razor can break Rabbit routinely, but in a lot of other ways, it seems to be okay. I don't think the teams are scared to do it. No, I mean, second game where they straight up pick the fr Lone Druid into it. Okay. So this is going to be a DJ hero, most likely. It's a uh, good lane presence, but also has good ganking in the mid game. Um, it's obviously not as good at ending the game as the Shadow Shaman is, but I think it's a, a good opener. Uh, it's also a pretty good hero pressuring somebody like Lone Druid as well, um, just because it's a lot of magic damage and mobility, so you can chase and trap him better. It does yeah. give them some flexibility. They have played it across the board. Yep. Eight and two DJ, but two and yeah. two pile I die since January 1st. And that's they can mix it up if they need to. Absolutely. Very good against Earthshaker as well if you catch him. Can't cast a spell. Yeah, his animations and, uh, are so slow. Yeah, level one, just a big advantage for Clock against him. Much better than something like Nice Talker. So maybe I'll see Coddle Band now in this phase, perhaps. Been waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but is it going to come? Or? If Secret didn't take it, I don't think it was going to. I, mean, I guess Fnatic could have, but I, I, like I after thought they the last would. Game, I honestly thought they would. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, it's not that high up. I just, pick I just feel like after after game two, no, it not. just wasn't worth worth grabbing. It didn't yeah. fit. 
the, it was like exploitable. It doesn't have a stun until you get mana leak at like level 10 or something. So mm. it's currently seventh most popular for DJ, which is you know, some way down when you think that's there's decent other heroes ahead of that that he prefers to play. I mean, it could have worked better if if NB's on Razor. Razor can defend himself better against a potential bullying soul offlane. But I just feel like shifting is felt like the right thing to do. Nice big stat on 707 for Fnatic. They are 17 and 6 when playing Clockwork. Yep. Clockwork was, again, it was sort of a support that came back uh, in SEA back in the fall season when Jabs was great on that hero and ev it looked like everybody else in the pro scene really struggled. The Warlock ban's kind of interesting. It uh, really helps That's facilitate like Razor becoming a lot stronger in lane, and but it's not as good at ganking. It's more like team fight and lane support. Yeah, it's also just a big pick for it's a big comfort yeah. pick for Pilot yep. Eight and one on that hero he is this year. They here to pick heroes that two other cores that can't really get ganked by Clockwork. Like the best thing you can do against Clock is remove his purpose in the game, and uh, that's the downside of Clock as a four position. Yeah, that's why I do like the flexibility of moving it to the five because that that matters a little bit less, and you still have the. The counter to the Earth Shaker. Yeah, I'm down to see Secret pick some Queen of Pain or something like that for mid. Do you think DK works almost as well? Okay. So they can be flexible with the bench pick, mm -hmm. but could also. I think it'd be pretty good as a core. Uh, swap uh, whoever Razor static links, swap Razor in. He doesn't deal very well when he's that deep. Maybe that's one of the reasons they banned out Warlock, because Warlock would be a decent way to turn that around if that happens. Yep. Yeah. Interestingly, of their last four revenge games, three of them have been Puppy. Yeah. It's usually a five for secret. Are you... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, you can also save against Clockwork Hook. <laughs> I wonder if you take SF this game for Fnatic. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Abed's FS SF is really, really good. Even against like Venge Swap, er interrupting Requiem. Uh yeah, I think that I think the early advantage that you get with the SF Clockwork combo, and just how good Abed can be at farming on the hero is enough to offset that. So Lion uh, maybe to protect against a TB pick. Yeah. So this is a four position Clockwork, and it's going to be a pile I die Lion. Lion, one of one of Pi's arguably signature heroes throughout his career. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I feel like Secret can be really flexible still. Um, I guess I have to be a little bit worried about like a Razor matchup, but so that's okay. So that is almost definitely a Puppy VS and an Ace Lone Druid. And I still like Will. I I still kind of like Will's pop call, though the lion makes that a little a little bit scarier. Well, maybe OD instead, Will, or is he too vulnerable again? For secret? Yeah. I would have taken it for fanatic. Okay. Okay. It's not bad for. I like OD as a hero a lot, as a whole. I just I just like him because he has that. He just has a very clearly defined role as this as this damage engine throughout the game. It's as long as you have push to go with him. How does it work when you cogs out, like right outside the OD the Bandage. OD astral? Yeah. Yeah, you I can feel get like the push. You should auto hit. Are you thinking about like if you banish and try to blink or something? Yeah. I feel like you'd get hit. It's very I I it's very very hard to blink out of that. It's like a I don't, I don't even I feel like you can't because it should be like positionally base. But I might be wrong. I would have taken OD on Fnatic, if not the SF. Hmm. Okay, Seeker can the double back for the DK again. It sort of goes with that, goes with that idea of heroes that are very of cores that are very difficult to threaten in lane. I'm super down with it now. With OD or or SF. Either. It just needs something high damage, basically, right? Yeah. In both yeah. lane against DK, okay. And yeah, you just need a source of big magical damage to threaten the DK. The they'll get like. Fnatic will get like a BKB on either of them, and then it's really hard for Secret to deal with. Dragon Knight is now uh, 16th, 17th pick now, and it's only 1.2% win rate. Oh my lord. Well, here's where it goes down, because Envy, you're going to take OD and blow him up, or SF. I, I just, I'm so It's also the third most picked picks. of this tournament now, by the way, DK, jointly with Disruptor and Witch Doctor. Uh, 
Only Rubik and Gyro have been picked more. Although, yeah, you, you do want to take those fourth because Secret could actually, if they had to, fit one of those into their lineup too. So they could ban one and pick the other. I don't think they want to go SF though. I don't think they do, side. but... Or even OD, probably with the Dragonite. I think, isn't like, I feel like Cole's one of the only teams that runs them offlane. And they always have to give them like a dual lane, otherwise Oh no, there's, there, are, there are a couple other teams that have shown it. Yeah, Moo is Moo's the one that's played it most offlane. Um, I, I also like this variation from, from Team Secret. Uh, picking Fadis Heroes last is not something that uh, they do often. Usually when they do that, it's the Tide. It's still in the pool. Because uh, they're not sure where the Razor's going. Yep, exactly. A long time for this fourth pick for Fnatic. I mean, if, if both picks are really are good, and so far they seem pretty good, um, well, they changed their mind. They went Underlord instead. Much stronger <laughs> mid hero. Nice big fat universe. <laughs> hero at four. So the aura is very good against Dragonite. Uh, the nuke is very good against Dragonite. Anything that does a percentage based health. I think he was actually one of the heroes that I saw when I looked at the hero matchups, at least based on Dota buff, not pro games. But. Um, you don't think that's offline Underlord? Oh yeah, I was, yeah, I was he, he was being yeah, oh, okay. he was giving a shit. Because we're just like <laughs> OD or SF, OD or SF. Man, that was dry humor. I like that, Kevin. That's I, really careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's purged, dude. You got me. Um, it makes uh, the the matchups a little bit harder for Secret. Lab. Their ban is kind of maybe less valid here, but they banned SF. Yeah, I, I, they it, it was gonna be one of the two. Take OD Fnatic, please. Gives them a little bit of mobility with their ultimate too. Yeah. And I think between yeah. like Underlord and Clock, it's actually so much area control. Uh, yeah, like, that's true. Like imagine the bear trying to fight through that, and he has to deal with the razor passive. Like. But but the thing is like I, I don't I don't know that Secret would have banned the Underlord sixth, and like oh my god, if you manage to get SF fourth and pick up Underlord fifth, that's so sick, because you have so much. You have the Cogs, you have the Pit, you have so much. That's just going to set people up for triple raises. They're going to be eating triple raises all game. Maybe just they didn't think that their opponents were onto them or something. Eh, fair enough. Who knows? All right, here's what's wild. If I'm Fnatic, I'm taking OD, okay? And if I'm Secret, I'm going to offlane Pugna. That's Wait. my wild call. I, I'm i down. Uh, I would like that, yeah. It doesn't get countered too much by the Fnatic heroes. He's got cover between, like, VS and stuff. Did so. they ban OD? No. They did. They did. Oh, and they're so going to they take, take the Abed Ember. Ember Spirit. Abed, really the only uh, the only player that's still down with the Ember. Oh. And Secret knows what they're going to... Oh, okay, no, that was Fnatic okay. that was taking the headsets. Right, I assume he'll go like a magic build against Dragonite and stuff. I mean, yep. there's a lot of stuns. On, there's not so many stuns on Secret, but there's enough. Dragonite, VS, and Urshaker once he gets Blink. Right. Um, Matchup-wise, it's probably it's a lot better than against Dragonite, I'm guessing. I've never played Ember versus Dragonite, but... So why would they not go the tide here? Uh, yeah, that it usually that's the typical when Secret leaves Fada's pick for last. It's almost always tied. But does tide fit? I'm not so sure. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> this is off lane DK. I told you. <laughs> Uh, well, yes. all right. <laughs> there's curveballs, and then there are ones that you know just bend round worlds, uh, and that's one of those. Because that's come through that nowhere. reaction. Uh, we've only seen one other invoker today, and it was played very well. In Look game at the one. reaction by yeah. Andy. Oh, Secret's going to do what Fnatic did game one. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. They're looking at the same kind of principle play, same kind of execution. Yeah. Um, makes your job almost impossible, I think, to call this one. But Adam, we'll start with you. I, 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 I love the adjustment at the tail end. I had a feeling they had something in their back pocket. I'm going to go secret in this one. Well played on both sides, but all three drafts in the series. Great drafts. Well, uh, yeah, I'll go with secret. I'm going to stick with the Fnatic fan club because I don't want to have to call them in the morning and cancel I my membership. I like that. So okay, good, good, save me time. Good, good point. I'm, I'm also kind of on that as well. Once in, you're always in, right? Uh, Kev's hopefully secured his membership and uh, is now a lifelong Fnatic fan. But that all depends on how they do in game number three. Let's rejoin our commentary team for that. And uh, and gents, you've got another Invoker game. We, we do. do. <laughs> I, I don't have a Fnatic membership card, however. Right. Okay. And 
Maybe if they win this tournament, I might buy one. Wow, that's a tall order. You're a mean man. I, I do have a. I, I have an high expectations. Card. There's only a there's only a <laughs> limited amount of slots that I would keep in my wallet, like for cards. Okay, all right. Well, I enjoy game three, yeah. gents. Wish you too. Yeah, I hope hope so too. We were, so we were tossing up over the last pick as well. We weren't thinking the invoker. We were tossing no. up puck. We were thinking control control for Fada. Do Team Secret still actually have enough control in their lineup now? They bring in the invoker. Does the combination work well enough? I, I throw to you. We're going to do a bit of a spoil here. Okay, I spoil. see this Invoker has picked up Quas at level 1. This looks like he might actually do Quas Wex. Especially versus Ember Spirit, Tornado is the one of the harder counters versus the hero. You remove the shield, you make his life miserable throughout all stages. Mm -hmm. I think this might be what they're doing here. I don't usually, I mean, you never really see Quas picked up unless they're going to do Quas Wex. Yep. Which, which then means like you, you run a more of a defensive early game. Can you get away with that then? Like it's, it takes time for the Invoker to come online. It takes time for the Lone Druid to really be an a big influence. And then you've got a DK as well. This seems like a very slow paced game from Team Secret, which didn't work for them well in game one. Can Fnatic force the momentum? Can Fnatic force a better timing? They don't really have building hitters on the side of Fnatic is the problem because they pick Ember. They're just looking to battle. And I think Will was saying it on the panel too. Secret, they just want to match battling. Sure, this one's a bit greed, but with an Invoker versus in this game, he can cause so much trouble versus an Ember Spirit. The EMP and Tornado they're really make your life miserable. They're switching lanes. They're, they're pulling Ace to the bottom lane. They're going to drag DK into the mid. And Invoker <laughs> is actually going to run. No, he's, he's mid. He's coming mid. He's absolutely going there. So DK is going to keep going all the way up. He's going to go top, yeah. <laughs> okay, was... Invoker side lane, not a thing. <laughs> yeah, was... Definitely not a thing. Hey, was it was it Black that you actually ran that for a short period of time? Not a thing. He'll try to make that one. <laughs> okay, not a thing. Okay. When was that, though? That no. was like 2013 when it was like Fort Spirit Necrobook, right? It might have been 14, but yeah. 14, yeah. 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 It, was, it, was, it was a while ago. It was a while back. <laughs> it was definitely a while back. I'm just, I'm really in, I'm no. really excited to see if he does go cross that, that, that was back when Poppy was still running Storm Spirit Jungle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. Roaming Tide Hunter. Roaming Tide Hunter. Never forget classic Jimmy. All right, so Ace has to battle up against both uh, Universe and DJ. That's going to be a uh, a bit of a, ru a rough lane for him. The R band versus mid one. We can watch the battle as well as uh, mid lane Pilai Dai is still looking for that rotation around the back. Mid one's trying to get up in R band's face, but with Yap still sitting behind him, you you were saying it before in the earlier games of this series. The Yapsaur is kind of like that mid laner that just sits there the he entire just, time. Ensure mid one. That's pretty much what he does. He plays around the mid lane more than anything. They actually really don't play around Ace too much on their supports. It's It sometimes is Puppy, but for the most part, they sit around mid and just TP. And we will see Fada, since he can't lane versus Razor in a 1v1, it's oh, all about the creep pull. Cold snap, Pilai die. Yapsaur needs to keep punching him and body blocking him. Pilai's in trouble. There's that early tornado and Yapsaur with the bonus damage. It's quite like Secures a first blood and uh, Fog. This is, this is why you are an expert. It is, in fact, Quas Wex. I mean, you never go Quas first if you're going next order. <laughs> but you're an expert, damn it. Thank you. Take, take the compliment. Everyone make a Reddit thread. Oh my god, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> so, Secret, they're continuing to get the. They're trying, continuing to manipulate the lane top with the DK, because we were just. Look like what we were just saying. DK versus Razor, you don't do much in the lane. This is giving a lot of space, though, bottom. So, yeah. they're duo pressuring Ace. Is, is this almost like when it's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't the cogs actually give the aura? to the Underlord as well when they get killed off? Because I've been noticing uh, DJ's just been running at him the yes. entire time. Nice, nice. I don't believe so, no. You don't believe so? Okay. No, because they're not, they're not units, they're structures. Okay. Yeah. I'm just watching this this uh, just almost insane amount of CS that's coming into into Universe. Like eight denies, they, 14 um, to the, uh, the Lone Druid, 9-1. They cogged the lane originally, and then DJ played soup, like just basically standing in front of Ace. So Universe got the full three like waves all the way back near his tower, and he was able to last hit freely. Yeah, I, I'm wondering now if uh, mid one's going to do... We got to witness it. Me and Owen, DJ's we coming saw down. multiple times. Ace Spoon on him is the very end of it. Universe goes with a two points up in Firestorm, so heavy damage onto Ace. There's four one charges available, so he'll Savage Raw DJ away. The TP was coming in and ended up being cancelled. It's a hard dive to go versus Lundra. As soon as he has two, the Savage Raw is always going to be there to defend, but I'm wondering if mid one, he might do the... The Topson build, we got to see it a bunch, was that the Meteor Hammer. It's, it was actually pretty cool the way that he used it when we got to witness it. And he goes for, of course, the Urn first, and then he goes for the Meteor Hammer afterwards. I'm wondering if mid one is going to follow suit. Well, watch. 
Right now he's uh right now he's not looking any pa anywhere past phase boots. No, it's at the beginning. Phase earn and then we'll Lord. see what the build is after. DJ done, doing a lot of damage. There's two points up in battery assault with the firestorm puppy will burn, and DJ ensures a kill on the bottom lane. Meanwhile, up on top, Eternal Envy. Not the greatest CS for him. Only now gonna get close to double digits. He's nine three against Fadas thirteen six. All that creep pulling. Really hurting him quite a bit here. He's got link though, so he'll be able to catch up nicely in mid. Mid yeah. one. Cold DJ's snap. here. Yeah, DJ wants to try and be involved in this. There's that level two battery assault, but a quick spin up into the air. TP support's coming in, and there's gonna be a nice fissure time if they look to change towards Arpet. Arpet slide of fist dodges. Wave of terror comes in as well. He would have been dead to rights if that fissure connected. That was sick. Oh, it was. Regen rune gets tonight to both the mid laners as uh, it got picked up by the the roaming DJ, he will now TP to bottom lane. But Fada gets both the bounty runes up on top, just like Ace picks up both the bounty runes on bottom. DJ's everywhere right now. He's even throwing some taunts at Yapsor. It is really up to him to make the moves around the map because Lion doesn't want to leave top. He wants to stay protecting Eternal Envy, just in case of those rotations. Because he Let's can, not have another Terra Blight game. Yeah, he can still be susceptible to the double roam coming out from the two supports. Oh, Abe has returned to the mid lane. Bottle running Ember. So a neat thing about the Quas Wex thing with uh, Invoker is actually the HP regen you get. When you get your level four Quas, you're sitting at somewhere around 30 HP per second when you have triple Quas invoked. For now, he's focusing on the battle with Arbed, hence maxing up the Wex. Lion's still looking for a rotation in around the back, dropping the sentry bullets yeah, by much, but Yapso and DJ Puppies in the neighborhood. So they throw out the wave of terror, they want to try and kill off DJ, and they will definitely be successful. He is totally trapped here. The extra damage from Yapso, and they give the kill to mid one. And Fada once again is being a nuisance up on top. I kind of like this. this is, it, it, he can't stand toe to toe with Razor. Yeah. He has to just keep playing punk so he can get farmed. But the big winner out of all of this is definitely Universe. He is 35 and 12 on this Underlord. Yeah. He said so much space being created by this four position DJ. Even if DJ does have to sacrifice himself up a little bit, the rotation was bound to come in to try and hit into Universal so Puppy. Already used both Magic Missile. They have gotten entangled. If they can just get the RNG to go their way, Puppy body blocking it up. So many hits. The Fidget will connect the cogs. Actually pushing the bear into <laughs> Universe. It. And Ace is so low. He's got 12 one charges, but DJ is the Savage Draw. They need to push DJ further back out of this for the Firestorm from Universe. That's level three. Yapsor is burning. He'll need to give some mana out, and he'll do so. How many so hits Puppy was that? finally has a magic missile. I, I saw five at least, but I think it might have been six. Six or seven, yeah, like five, and between five and seven hits for Ace and no root. The RNG not in his favor. Yep. The advantage for him is he keeps getting these double bounty runes on bottom, so the progression, at least, for Lauren Druid is, is not bad. He's sitting at 2.5k net worth to the 3.3k of Universe. That Firestorm damage is just hell. For the for the supports. Yeah, I mean, he got the bear last hit too. That 300 gold level yep. six already now on universe at six minutes. That's how he gets around, right? He actually dark rifted back already. Fada top lane, static link is on him. He has to start the TP out before Eternal Envy gets too much damage. It's only two points up in the static link, but still give it the respect. Six minutes in. DJ is looking for another opening in towards mid. How's the vision game look like? Okay, the vision game's not that great. Uh, Spirit's down, DJ wants to walk straight through him. The double fissure from Yapsil will connect. Arbed, Cole snapped up, need a little bit more damage up the hill, but Pilei dies here too. And Envy starts his TP, and when the plans are field, they'll have enough damage. He'll invoke up the Quas, then goes inside the Ghost Walk, but it won't matter. The Sentry Ward, which was there to do the D warding in the first place, is what reveals him. And the denial on the Observed Ward can at least happen. Pilei die. Stun creates space, Yapsil holds the fissure. Everything, like Everything is going in the wrong for Seeker, and everything is going in the right for Fnatic there. That one, like you said, it's a de-warding sentry, and it catches him because of the positioning that he went to go run away. Great gank, though, from Fnatic. Everybody getting involved there, like you said. Envy porting in to make sure. Yeah, they actually needed the plasma field damage, but if if he didn't have the sentry ward there, that would have been a big rotation like waste for Fnatic. Because you got more space for Fada. He got up a little bit more levels. Yapsaw is going to be up here to ensure that eight minute room belongs to them. Even follow up with the Fissure if he wants to. Pilot Eye keeps the hex on him and stun. Okay. You'll get something out of it. Fissure now comes out because Fada's moving in. Two points up in the Breathe Fire and the Dragon Tail stun. Poppy in the neighborhood. Fada will get the kill. 
<laughs> Where is mid one actually heading? He's continuing, continuing north. They're coming for Eternal Envy. He wants to get active because he's getting pressured a bit too much. They'll need to hit the tornado. Send him up and towards the air. The EMP burn with the call snap. So much damage and envy. Well, he's got a lot of one charges up the sleeves. Gets back behind the tower. Lion and Clockwork start their TPs in. And I'll cancel the Clockwork one as Eternal Envy sits on 150 HP back behind the tower. That looks like rotations everywhere. Our bed's coming bottom. So Ace going to try and just push Universe out. Universe has a Vanguard though. 1500 HP. You're not pushing him out. Yeah. Ace. Where's that TP? There's the pit to start with. Searing Chains, level 3. There's a long time for Ace to be trapped there, but then the Fear, Arbed, and Universe back up. The Spirit Committal. There was no TP support coming to this one. Yapsop potentially could have, but he's leveling and farming mid. They want to keep someone mid because they're making these rotations. They really want to punish Envy. Envy's actually brought himself out two salves. He burns both of them as Whoa. well, but here comes the attack. In through the rear, Pilot Eye going to get stunned up. The EMP burn hurting hard. Pilot Eye, one more attack. That should be enough. It will be enough. But the damage stolen by Envy, pushing it into Fada. That's a lot of armor to get through, but 112 stolen damage. The Fissure, maybe Envy's in too deep. But support's nearby. Universe has already arrived up on this top lane. Now it's key for mid one to make those moves. He wants to get earned charges. He didn't have it just yet, but now it's it's really important for him to get them so he can keep the Quas chain, chain mini stunning people. And both supports, like you said, Yapsor was mid and DJ went mid too to get their level sixes online. I'm waiting for Lone Droid to really force this bottom tower, like get some kind of reaction. Now that Universe has left, he could obviously Dark Rift around the map. This is his big advantage. Makes the rotations for that offlaner even better. Nice regen rune for Abed. May commit quite heavily into Yap, so they know he's just farming there. DJ closes the distance, but doesn't get close enough just yet. Abed's here though, stalking, and they do not know Abed's down here still. Yep. Yap, so looking for the stun. Actually waited it nicely, faked it out with his initial totem. So the EMP, going to keep everybody else at Puppy. I think he's still looking towards Abed. Doesn't want this regen, oh, okay. Magic Missile will chase him. Yapsaw's here. <gasps> the Cogs. DJ creates enough space. Yapsaw's trying to fidget, trying to get something back in return. They can at least lock in DJ, but they don't have enough damage while he's locked there. Meanwhile, up on and top, Barda goes down. Yeah. Mid one was trying to force the Remnant back so he jumped into an EMP, but they did not have the damage to actually force that. And Abed, he has a regen, so he's not looking to stop. He's looking to put the pressure onto mid one here. Yep, coming from behind. Clockwork has level six, so Hawkshot DJ goes in. Lock him inside the cog, need to break him free a little bit so he can close the distance, but Arbed, call snapped up, TP is here. Yapsaw, ready for the Fissure, but Eternal Envy has also arrived. The Fissure blocking him out of the fight and keeping DJ under the tier one tower as well. Ace has made the move. He can't pressure the bottom tower. They want to try to get at least one. He wants to take top. They could yep. look for Pi if they can close on the stun. Poppy's going to get the stun. Needs to switch the aggro off so the bear cops a little bit more because this is going to happen. All the oh. damage from Pylai die. That just happened. Yeah, it really did. I don't think he was ready for that level six, but Lion already had it under the tower now, and Eternal Envy's back to defend. Universe is an absolute beast. He's 5.9k net worth. He's got a full Crimson Guard done 12 minutes into this game, and Fada's like looking at this going, I am I am not, I am not a knight. This this is the ultimate beast. And the fairy tale doesn't work where I get the kill. In fact, I get rooted all the way down the bottom, then chained, and now DJ will come into battery assault him as well. Universe will get the kill. The T1 tower belongs to Fnatic. Top as well, Ace. Oh, Epi's actually stealing the damage from the bear. Ace wanted the kill over on Pylai Dai. Yapso has to commit the fissure to keep Eternal Envy exactly where he is. But the hook shot in from the side. Yapso again in a horrible position. Fnatic just making better responses and better moves overall. It just seems like Secret, they're trying to get these kills, they're trying to make these moves, but it's just being responded to too quickly by Fnatic. It's escalating quickly too. Yeah. Like the gold advantage is now really going their way, and it's only been the last couple of minutes that Fnatic have really turned on the heat, but this is when they get a 2.7k gold advantage, their experience advantage moving towards the 4k. Everything is going their way, and like, what do you do against this? Team, Team Secret still need to rotate heroes down to bottom lane to deal with Universe. They really want to just try to get a tower, it did seem like, with the Lone Druid and the Dragonite trying to commit somewhere, but they're just getting met by more heroes every time. DJ on point every time with his rotations, yep. and it seems like the bottom lane is almost impossible for them to actually do anything in, because Universe, he's, the only way he can really die is to like a four-person gank at this point. Yeah. 
And look at this again. Abed and DJ tag teaming up. They're looking for Fada. And he's, he's hiding in the trees, but I'll bet and DJ under the cover of smoke so that Observer War doesn't see much. Fada doesn't get the second rooting on him. He's still underneath the tower. DJ's hook shots off cooldown in two seconds time. The Observer War they just planted knows exactly where Fada is. Universe will chase through, but they got a better target. A real big target. Mid one. He needs some space. He'll go invis. Where's the detection? Fissure from Yapsaw buys more time. Universe, cold feed it up. If you're going to try and kill off the Invoke, you must have that detection. But Universe doesn't care. His regen is 16 a second. He's just tanking the tower. He's going to be going for pipe next too. So it's going to get increasing more that resistance to this team. Secret mid one still wants to fight. His tornado's on cooldown for four more seconds. They just want to. They really want to get him at least one urn charge so he can make moves around. Yep. Ace has gone for a dominator, by the way, on Lone Druid. He had okay. Yeah, she got a dominator. He had uh, Maelstrom queued up for a while. So he must have had uh, a change in a change of heart. Wonder why Dominator over everything else, unless he just needs it for the regen, needs something else like to to battle Envy. If he's looking for a troll trapper, like I think maybe he's thinking they just well, need some type of lane pressure. Oh, DJ. He's actually not that bad of a kill. He's two one three. Here comes Varda into the dragon form. They need this kill nice and quick. Breathe fire. Took a little bit longer. Mid one will actually claim it. He finally gets an earned charge now too. So he can look for those kills, at least on the support heroes in particular. I love this move from Fnatic. Like Arbet instantly turns on the flame guard, goes down towards the bottom lane to add pressure into the tier two tower because he could see Fada with the dragon form looking to add pressure to the mid. That tier one tower is pretty low. So Lone Druid's having more fun up here with Universe with the Sada Hadoukens. He's got a little bit more damage. Universe gonna put down the root. Locking up the army of Ace, Arbed does his TP as well. Spirit Camino, does he want to go through the tree line? He does not. Now he does over the trees. Here comes Razor as well, but Tornado up in the air. Mid one drops the EMP too. Arbed, a little bit of trouble. He's actually bone dry, and Envy's on the wrong side of the tracks. Rooted up the double stun from Pylai Die. It will not create enough space. Team Secret bring five heroes to this top lane. Wow. Fnatic will look to do exactly the same thing. So pretty interesting. I guess the way he's trying to use the Dominator is just to be able to sp split push and take towers even faster because he just jumps into true form, pops the battle cry, and he ends up actually quite hard. You see how low he brought Universe there? Yep. Dyer's top interesting build coming out. Puppy. Nice stun. Okay, so by Pi. Yep. There's support coming over, however, but hook shot. DJ goes in, but he's locked in with three heroes. That's not to be make battery salt effective, but it makes Underlord effective. The perfect pit, the perfect firestorm. And you're gonna lose two heroes. But they claim the tower. They do claim the tower. Their first one of the game. I'd still imagine Ace is gonna go for Radiance this game after this build anyway. He got he picked up a catapult there to be able to help push the tower even more. It makes it more more of an uh, of an option the fact that they got more money, but no, he put Maelstrom, Maelstrom. back into the quick buy, just right. picked up the Mithril Hammer. Interesting. Um, so so they make him, they make him the quick the early fighter while Invoke is still playing catch up because you got no I guess like there's, there's no to... minus mid one, right? Like it's Agonims is gonna take a very long time. I mean he wants to go for the range lone druid build. He even picks up the attack range, so he wants to keep the distance from the razor and go for it. Yeah, that used to be the build, right? The Dragon Lance Maelstrom on Lone Druid to mm -hmm. outrange the razor. Interesting approach. Fada has Blink Dagger now finished up on Dragonite, so they have better ways of initiation. He's recovered very nicely. He's pretty much tied up with the uh, yeah, Ember Spirit. They're looking for a kill on mid. Smoke up, DJ's on the high ground. Fada just with the fresh blink dagger jumps forward into DJ. It's not just about killing DJ, it's securing the tier 1 tower in mid. And the ability to fight us for before Fnatic can react. And, well, Pitlord's coming in. I mean, Underlord's coming in. Ooh, old school. Uh, Hex, Pile I Die, nice rotation. VS, there's your swap out. Had to sacrifice himself to ensure that Fada can survive. Fada's already in a rough game. Can he deny himself up to the Dragons? That would be the ultimate thing, but no. Eternal Envy, he a will claim the kill. A standard Venge, uh, a Puppy Venge play right there. Yeah. Throwing his life away for his core. No. <laughs> Mid can be slowed down as well. Fissure, Tornado, that's more than enough. Ace may be the one having a little bit of a harder time up on top. I'm hoping for some mid-game uh, alacrities being thrown on this Lone Druid from a distance. Mm -hmm. He's already got the one point in Exhort too on mid one. Oh, he's going to do so much with that. Yeah, the attack speed's going to be insane because Max Wex just makes you hit so fast. Put him in range of the Venjora, mm -hmm. then that, yeah. He's got the Maelstrom now up and running. Mid lane again, EMP Tornado. Just trying to make it difficult. Universe goes from 100% to zero. 
with that's, that EMP burn. That's a pretty interesting uh, call that you said. Like It's with the Venge, right? So that could be why he wants to go for that straight range form too. Not only just because he's Versa Razor, but he has that extra Vengeance Aura mm -hmm. to be able to benefit from. He's even queued up a BKB as his next item. Yeah, He's he's becoming the Very big different. fighter. Our bet, I think, wants to go for a solo kill on Puppy. If Puppy's just down far enough, and well, side of Fist Searing Chains begins it, but it won't follow up. Abed's the one who's going to be going for the Radiance. Okay. Intriguing. Just shows you the, the, the dynamic nature of heroes in Dota. Yeah. Never have to pigeonhole yourself into one or the other. Middle lane. Mid one's finally able to claim that tower. Took a while to do so. DJ's in the neighborhood looking for the hook shot. Needs to get it. Four star. Already started up by mid one. That's what he spent his early money on. And Swap Puppy dragging Pilot Eye in. The EMP's in a good position. Fnatic does not want to go into this fight because now Eternal Envy has no man to speak of. He'll use his one charges. A one for one trade off. Does anyone else build Arcane Boots on the side of Fnatic? All right, they did at least spawn Pi. So they have to have at least one or two sets to be able to play versus EMP in team fights because otherwise it seems so you're silly. all just out of man. It always seems so silly to see Arcane Boots on the line, however. Oh, mid one. Abed. Yeah, he just slides forward. The call snap and the urn charges makes it almost impossible for Abed to really just jump himself away from this. Slide a fist in one second time. Combine it to spirit out. Urn is still ticking him down. Sunstrike on the positioning. Level Abed two. will fall. A level two Sunstrike will end up killing the poor little Ember Spirit. I say poor little Ember Spirit. He's not that poor. But that was a four kill streak. The mid one was just able to like end. And mid one is now shown. He's going to be going for the Orchid. Since he's versus Ember Spirit, it makes a lot of sense. I was really hoping that he'd do the top sin build. But no, he wants to be able to scale a bit harder. Makes a lot of sense to hunt too. Mm -hmm. If he's going to be running around at high movement speed inside of Ghost Walk, that's the this is the old Claus Wax build. It's yeah. the phase earn it into Orchid. This game, he, since he's versus Clockwork, he went for the four staff. <laughs> Just had to modify it slightly. Only way to survive Fada, maybe in a little bit of trouble on bottom lane. TP comes in, the BTs of Arbed looking for the moment. Friends are too far away inside the trees. Fada, yeah, he can't juke this one. Here comes the Spirit Committal. They want this kill quickly before Puppy can really help out. And Puppy, he was almost there for the swap. But thanks to the Observer and Sentry of Fnatic, they would have been very well prepared for it. Fada had a sec, about one and a half seconds left until his Blink Dagger. So he was trying to juke around the trees to get that Blink out. But not you know, the crazy thing to. for Puppy is he dropped the Sentry Ward, then saw the Observer and Sentry. The second he saw it, he backed out of the fight. Means he actually lost his Sentry Ward for it all. Ace, bye universe, bye universe. He went all the way home. Could have actually joined his teammates in the bottom lane to take out that tier two. But Much closer game this time around though. So it's less than yeah. 1k gold advantage. The ex experience is also negligible, about 2k. It's coming back after Team Secret have just tried to change the tempo of this game. Since the Blink Dagger arrived over on Fada, Palai Dai fails the Blink, but uh, Fada also uh, fails the stun, so now Fada fails the Blink. Nice hook comes in, Puppy swaps him back out once more to take it for the team. By the space for mid one who drops down very, very low. He has EMP Tornado. Actually, he has Cold Snap Tornado invoked. But I think at this point, when Fnatic bring that many numbers into the lane, you're happy for it. Ace almost took the tier 2 tower up on top of Arbed. He at least can commit to kill off the bear, but he wants Arbed. Envy will take the bear, just do the extra damage, get the bonus 200 gold. Efficiency! As Ace Savage Raw. But they kept their distance nicely. So he'll go up into the trees. Rocket gives him the vision. And that's a good kill. Beam on back in mid lane. Fada, very, very low. Ice Wall makes it impossible for Pylai Dai to actually run away from mid one or to keep up, keep up with Fada, who's coming back in for the kill. He's looking for the Earth Spike, but he can't do it. The call snap makes it impossible to channel. You can see that they were hesitant about fighting around mid because Ace was split pushing top. He actually almost got the tier two during all of it. Really good obs just got planted down, scattered out the movement of Eternal Envy. Radiant structure. As well as the clockwork. They see so much now, Team Secret. They and they want to deny the mid tower if possible. They've got the blink on the shaker, so they could have set up a trap here for Envy. Radiant He's moving into the tree line, right in front of the tower. Fada's not healthy enough. It's still nighttime as well, so the vision game is a little bit more restricted. But this radiance for Ember Spirit is rapidly approaching. Now 3.5k for Abed. Hog shot. Hi, puppy. Bye, puppy. Nice knowing you, man. Fada TP'd in pretty quickly, but <laughs> I think he realized there was nothing he could do. Not once Eternal Envy showed himself to. It does seem Fnatic is in a is in a pretty good spot of just being able to pick off heroes a little bit better around the map. Like again up on top lane. Here's the Spirit Committal. Arbed. Oh, actually a little slow on his positioning for the jump. Ace was already backing out of the of the pit. 
Look at the item adjustments that are coming out. Lone Druid has now queued up Bloodthorn. They want to just be able to lock down this Ember Spirit. They don't seem to be afraid of the Razor with the itemization that they're going for. Ah, uh, mid lane, mid one. Currently a frog. A searing frog. One, a full tornado EMP pilot. I may even die. No, oh, he doesn't die at that 150 HP. Invoker definitely goes down. It just seems so hard for Fnatic to keep the fights going because they keep getting, like, it's like three heroes getting hit by the EMP every time. So they are, are always low on mana. And they're going to go in for Roshan. Firestorm. Blink Dagger's on ES. Yapsil only just got this. This is so huge at a level two, e like, a level two Echo Slam. If they can get some level of information, the Wave of Terror will provide this and be ready for the jump. They know they're in there. Yapsaw, he's high enough up that the rocket from DJ, it didn't actually scout him out. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and slam in time, almost there. Now they see a little bit more. The Plaster Fielder connected. He can't blink anymore. He'll go for the Fissure. Roshan's at 200 life. Yapsaw will not jump in. He'll blink away instead. And what could have been amazing was mediocre at best. Yapsaw just needs to TP, but he can't. On cooldown for five more seconds. That's your blink reveal. Roshan goes the way of Fnatic. Aegis onto the Ember and Great. full Radiance as well. Great play by Envy there. Just leaving the pit. He knows he's not needed to hit it. He just has to make sure that the, Earth, the Earthshaker can't steal the Aegis by any means. And that's Everyth 4K. Everything seemed right if he only jumped earlier, but he would have had to go blind. Yeah. That's, that, would, that would have been the huge downside. And like you said, Radiance picked up. They've all queued up BKBs now on the side of Fnatic. BKB is finished on Razor. Mm -hmm. Ember Spirit's going to have one in quite a while, but that's his next choice since he sees the Orchid being picked up. But the Orchid is done on mid one, so they can now look to get, make some aggressive plays around this Invoker with the Earthshaker Blink Dagger and the Dragonite Blink too. I'm wondering if they felt till they had more time to get that second up. Like if it was going to be like a Lincoln Sphere for the Ember Spirit as opposed to the BKB. So that at least they could lock him down with that. Because you've already, like, BKB is on the two big cores for Fnatic. Like, Envy has his. Just how effective is this Orchid going to be once that's up? Or is it not meant for them? It's, it's mostly just meant for the Ember Spirit. It's, it's good versus the supports and the Underlord, but they want to be able to catch out this Ember. Then their timing has to be perfect, and yeah. they have to keep the Ember down. And they have spotted Abed here. They've got the Orchid available too. Abed could go down twice here if the rotations come. Puppies in the neighborhood, however, and so is Yamsaw. Quick little stun, and Abed, mid one. They break the Aegis the Immortal. Underlord. He's actually jumping into the bottom lane. So they're going to try and commit a little bit harder. That's why Arbed's coming underneath the tier 2 tower. Puppy still has a swap available, but here comes DJ. In through the rear. The swap is already out, but he actually pulled him in to the middle of the cogs. That wasn't part of the plan. Eternal Envy gets a triple kill. He's on a monster kill. He's 9-1 on this Razor. This was, that was great by uh, a universe there to join, because they're like, oh man, Abed is actually at risk of getting picked off twice here. They bring everybody down, and now they can transition this into a push. And Ace, he's still not fight ready. He's just going for the split push. He'll take the tier two tower up on top. That's all they can do. Fnatic have entered the base. They're in on top of the tier three tower. There is no buyback. Fortification also not available here for Team Secret. Fnatic, 26 minutes in. Not only have they just taken a tier three tower, they want to take more. Lone Druid took the tier two tower up on top. The rooting on the DK. DJ's making sure they can't get in too close. Can they defend this? They need to keep the melee racks alive. Puppy comes to the front lines. Arped, as well as Universe, they're committing, and they do bring down the melee racks. The Savage Raw trust trying to hold Arped in position a little bit longer. The chaining stuns, they keep him going. Now DJ hooks in the space creator, but the Orchid Silence, the perfect timing to kill off the Ember Spirit. Ace will get a double kill out of this, but they just lost their melee racks on bottom. This feels like such an odd game because of the, the item builds that are coming out. We haven't seen like the range, lure, range Lone Druid much in the games. We've been ha we haven't really gotten to see too much Quas Wex Invoker. And it just seems like Fnatic, they're playing around it really nicely. Having these early BKBs, just constant movements around the map too because of this super farmed Underlord. Notice how Ace hmm. hasn't spent any of his money as well. I'm not even certain he's locked on this. Pylai die? Well, okay. I'm not quite certain he really wants to be involved in this unless he can have some more friends. Here comes Eternal Envy. Mid one, needs some distance. He's got it with the four star. And he will be able to get away. Pilot I will survive. Okay, no, Ace did actually just buy the straight up Bloodborne. He finished the whole thing. He hasn't really been involved in too many of the fights. Sure, he's 4-2-1, but you see like a lot of the fights are being taken. It's it's not like Fada's there either. They're, it's, 
it, it's kind of like these three heroes running around for a uh, secret while F Fnatic are grouping up more and taking the fights as four or five heroes every single time. I didn't see a ping from Fnatic to actually watch that happen, but they rocketed the second they smoked as well. Uh, the Observe Ward may have scattered out the Bloodthorn, but here comes Yamsor. Fishy to begin with. Bloodthorn onto Universe. Hookshot forward from DJ, but now he's isolated. They'll swap out the heroes, and this is now just a simple one-by-one pickoff, and you know Team Secret, they want more. That's what Tornado Search from mid one won't find his target. The Savage Roll will cancel the TP of Pylai Die, and mid one will get the double kill. Two heroes without buyback, a big one in universe to bring down. And Ace That's is his now first death of, of the game. Yeah, and Ace is now here to play. He's got yeah. the items that he wanted to be able to actually take team fights. Let's see what they can make of it with this high right click damage build, sitting for over 250. That's about a 2.5 2.5k gold swing from that, as yeah. well as uh, about 5k in the experience. And they can take buildings so fast, like we we're mentioning with the alacrity. They're going up. Mm hmm. Okay, how much does Ace do? Do the math. And you, you, you were doing it a little bit before. I want to see that alacrity up. I don't know if he's going to throw. Uh, he can still throw on the bear because the bear has demolish. Range ranks was lost on bottom, so you know Team Secret are committing in for this now. The creep wave's coming up behind him. The bear in. Farter to dragon form. Look and that. Ace is plus 298 on top of his 106. Eternal Envy to the front lines. Swap back in from oh Buffy. My God. Envy's down. He'll have buyback available, but the Bloodthorns on the Ember Spirit. Arpez down as well. Are they going to force buybacks on two of the cores? They only got it out from Razor so far. And Hawkshot! DJ in through the side. Maybe he regrets this. Farter's quite tanky, even with that urn on top of him. It's not even the urn, it's actually the Spirit Vessel, so maybe not so tanky. But the VS Spirit is fighting back. The Tier 4 Towers are under siege back in Team Secret's base. They don't get exactly what they're looking for out of this. But it did cost a lot of money for the Razor. That, he actually lost 1.4k just because of that fight. And they lost Arbed. And they lost Arbed. And Lone Druid's got more money. 16,000 on him at the moment. We've been discovered. We've been discovered. The Liquid guys have found us. Team Liquid. <laughs> they just Watching from afar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, I mean, like I was saying, though, th doesn't this feel like... It feels kind of strange, the, yeah. the game, because now it's like they've been kind of taking fights with only four to three or four heroes, and as soon as Ace shows up, they get a commanding fight coming out, they get a big couple kills, and even though it's a Rax advantage, the experience after all that is at zero. The gold, pretty much at zero. It's 1k right now for Fnatic. It feels like a game of adaption. So the, it se is. The, the, the second one team shows the hand, they're like, okay, well, we change our plan, we now go for this. And, well, we try and predict this as far as we possibly can forward. So the Orchids both arrive, like the Bloodthorn as well as the Orchid. Mid one's like, well, do I finish up a secondary Bloodthorn? Uh-uh. I'm now going to go for the Scythe device. We need an answer to the BKBs that we're seeing arriving on yep. Fnatic. So it's reactionary item play, but each team is still finding that right timing throughout the game. It makes for a very fascinating game of Dota. Yeah, the, I mean, the Invoker Lone Druid, we've seen, the, we've seen this a couple of times. We saw it again thing, especially, and we were like, they're going to struggle a bit because it's greedy. But mm -hmm. when they do this, it, it kind of changes it because they kind of went for the greed on the Lone Druid, but it's not really the Radiance because he did that range build versus Razor. And the Invoker went cross wex so it completely throws a whole different wrench in the works to change the way that the game is actually played and analyzed. Team Seeker on the hunt. Four men smoke up a long way away. Fnatic, I thought they might be doing the same. The Observer and Sentry is, is uh, showing the positioning here of Eternal Envy, and they're all backing up. So the rocket flies out. There's no aggressive ward on Fnatic beyond like watching Fnatic apart from that, that uh, one up on the top. And there's a Wild Wing Ripper just sitting inside of Roshan. So if they walk in there, Roshan may respawn in 30 seconds. They kill it incredibly fast with this build coming up from the Lone Druid. And they're going to have, like we are mentioning, the Alacrity, plus they've got Vengeful for is, all that bonus. Is Yapsil positioning himself where he is now to try and break a smoke anchor Fnatic? That, that looked like a, yeah, that looked yeah. like it was a smoke uh, they, they're, they're reading it right. Fnatic are actually fully smoked up. They're looking for a target. Even Ember Spirit was caught inside of that smoke. But back under the Observer and Sentry, Yapsaw can sit in the trees awesome. and he'll see them. There's the smoke break and Yapsaw sees it coming, knows it's there. They put down the Observer Ward from Fnatic. But they but know thanks, it's there. Yeah, the Sentry Ward's also available and now they drop their own Sentry. So it's, it's a crisscross of the detection. So Ace quickly gets rid of that Observer Ward. They do not want Fnatic having vision. But they also have to rotate back down to bottom or else these Tier 4 towers are going to start to hurt more. But luckily for M Envy got the change he wanted. Tier 4 towers don't regenerate. Everyone wanted that change. Just remember, Envy was one of the most outspoken people about it. Him, it was bullshit. Sumail was very adamant about it as well. He really didn't like that, uh, the tier 4 regen. So Fada has gone for the full Silver Edge here, dealing with the de deactivate the Atrophy Aura could be quite useful for them in the fights. Mm -hmm. 
And th I think the next big timing, at least for Secret, is going to be that BKB on Lone Druid. I don't really see how they can kill him once he's got that, because he can just keep himself in the back. But before that, he's definitely a bit vulnerable. But the BKB on Lone Druid, I still haven't actually even felt like... Uh like the big presence from Earthshaker. We felt it with Poppy, with his ES yes. in the last game, because it's all about the Echo Slam. Maybe I'm just still holding on to my disappointment around that Roshan pit, because it could have been amazing. Uh, I but, mean, it is still you haven't felt it yet. It's because it's, it's, it's a strange game, the way that it's kind of been, been played around, because you don't really see Ember Spirits too often anymore. You don't see ranged Lund Lundruids. All this is just adaptation, like you were mentioning. I think that's from, like, wait, is Universe, yeah, Universe is buying a BKB and then going to go into a Fall Assault Kuros. So he can just stand in the fight. He doesn't, I mean, he dies so quickly if he does get Bloodthorn. We'll, we'll, we'll see if he can stand through. There's Team Secret. They're smoked up, rotated around the north side. A really good position for mid one if he can get a good hit. And there's the blink forward. They want DJ out. The Pit of Malice doesn't actually work. The fish cancels him out way too early. But the hook shot forward, it only connected on the bear. Arbed doesn't hit his side of fist searing chains combination. The BKB will wear off in two seconds' time. And this immunity will be gone. Universe gets a nice double pit. But will it be enough for the double searing chains? It may almost be. But Fada finds the back lines up inside the lane. Almost the kill. The line will die from just the fall. Scared of heights. And they move their attention towards DJ. Fada inside the Cogs trapped in there with him, and they swap Envy back in once more. The Bloodthorn is out. Three heroes down for Fnatic, but the critical thing, none of them have buyback. The Creep Wave is up there on the top lane. If Team Secret knew about this, they could just force and take that top lane right now, but they don't know. They're going in for Roshan instead. While the bottom lane is pushed in so far, the Tier 4s are under attack. The way they kited around inside of that fight for Secret. The BKBs came out and it didn't seem like it mattered. They were just like, okay, we're gonna run around in circles here. Fada's gonna play in the backsides. Sure, he dies, but he finds the targets that matters. He finds the clockwork, he finds the lion. And those are the two big catches that Fnatic has. Because Abed, if he goes in the front lines, he's, a, he's an Ember Spirit. Sure, he's got this magic immunity, but his armor is so low. If he gets hit a couple times by this Lone Druid, by this Invoker, he can easily be brought down. Yep. Curry is making a trip up towards the north. It's got the BKB of Ace. It's also got the four staff of Yapsaw, who came to defend. So I maybe the... they're waiting for those items before they were trying to force an issue. Mm -hmm. I saw the, the courier on Dire as well died. I think it, it wasn't the actual full Shivas on the Razor. It actually was the recipe, and I think a four staff for. It had a Shiva's Guard recipe. It had a Shiva's Guard recipe, and the four, four staff, staff of Clockwork. On Clockwork. Okay. Yeah. Are we ever going to get that back so we can actually click on the dead courier? Like. Uh... I, I saw the screen Pimp from Pimp's Pimp Uncle no. Shake. No. Pimp says no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so he takes the level 20 alacrity damage attack speed. So we're going to be seeing some hard right clicks coming out of this lone druid for mm -hmm. sure. And it's pretty much a full hex now for mid one. Do you, do you still want to go for this? Or do you force him into like a, a big heavy hitter? On right, the, it's hex. You definitely go hex on the invoker. You're versus Ember Spirit and you're versus Razor. The only real problem is if they do get their BKBs off, and all you have to do is kite them out, as we've seen them do very successfully so far in Secret. Now, Secret, they've they finally claimed that gold advantage. Even though they have this bottom Rax that's been taken out, they've got Aegis and Cheese now. They're looking very ready to fight with Fada having these two different tools of initiation with the Blink and the Silver Edge. And yeah. you know, it's, it's funny, like, they win that fight, and it's like, oh, they didn't even have, they didn't have Echo Slam. They just, he never got an opportunity to actually get it off. It's just that, I don't know if uh, Fnatic is even concerned about it, really. Like, obviously, if you get hit by it when you're five heroes together, yeah, you'll be concerned about it. But the fight's just so split up. Yeah. DJ's just been constantly throwing spirit vessels on Yaps in the fight, so he can't actually get good blinks and get decent positioning. Mm -hmm. Lone Drew is coming up towards the top lane. It's the final tier one tower, so it makes sense the Fnatic will try and assault it. But they don't really seem to be doing that. The BKB can be afforded by Underlord. It would cost Universe his buyback, however, so he may not be too happy about that. I don't think Envy's going to be too concerned about it now. It does seem like he really needs a BKB on the Underlord, though. Walking into this, yeah. sure he's got Atrophy Aura, sure he's got this 13 armor, but it, as soon as that Bloodthorn comes out, he gets bursted so quickly from all the physical. The next reactive item we see, uh, Full Pipe is now done for Puppy. Okay. Yeah. He's recognizing that Ember Spirit's whole damage kit is pretty much magic damage at this point because he's gone for Radiance. And, and even and went the for spell, Flame Guard and, and the Spell, spell M. M. Yep. Well, he's not. He doesn't know this exactly just yet. No, he doesn't. He'll find it out later. And then the Shiva's got as well for an Ember Spirit being his build. Yeah, uh, their physical actually, is that really actually limited. Gives him, that's giving him double Shivas and then an Assault Kuros. Yeah. The, the physical on Fnatic is extremely limited. So those BKBs, when they do all come out on Secret, it's going to be very difficult for Fnatic to take fights. Fada's getting closer and closer to his. And like we mentioned, the Lone Druid has his. And not only just that, Ace is getting very close to level 25. 
So he's going to have that double BKB when he shifts into the true form. It feels like Universe actually has to, to buy the BKB before the fight. He's got a surplus of 985, but he's going to need this to survive in the fights. This and is their only wave buys... right now in mid. Yeah. Albert was trying to cut it around the secondary one. That bottom lane is in again. The tier 4 tower is back under siege. <laughs> Someone's got to do something about this. It's, 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 the, it's the thorn in the side of Team Secret, right? Like, it's almost worth Ace just running at this tier 1 tower and bringing it down. In fact, that's... Yeah, with the Alpha Wolf behind him... Just like, do you, yeah, he's, he's, he's just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they no, bring it down so quickly. No backdoor regeneration for tier 1 towers makes this possible. And Fnatic... I think it's really hard for them to actually take team fights now into Secret with this, especially with this Aegis and Cheese, but Secret has just hit a really big timing. Yeah. But Team Secret need that creep wave, at least by like creep skipping like they are now, they're able to slow down the momentum on bottom. Give a chance for their own creep wave to push back out again. But they're on the hunt. Mid one, under the cover of the Ghost Walk. So Lincoln's is pretty much done on Abed as well now. So he has a little bit more help in the fights to not get instantly orchided or an instant hex to show he has the BKB for the orchids. But this will help him a bit to protect. And BKB on Fada, they've still got Aegis for about 30 seconds. They could look to They'll have to, to wait advantage. a little bit longer though. Like he burned Dragon Form. So it's on cooldown for 35 seconds. Okay. So yeah, but they'll, they'll still take that long to get the creep wave to the tier three tower. So it makes sense. Ace is just constantly pulling that, manipulating bottom that lane. bottom wave to make sure that the push doesn't keep going. And now they actually finally have gotten some more aggressive wards down because Puppy was holding out to three for quite a while. They were limited on vision for the last five minutes. We've been watching that from more teams here. Like they, they hold on to a whole bunch of wards yeah. until they're like, this is the time when we go. Like when we saw it, uh, I think it was yesterday afternoon when we had the four wards go down from both sides at the same time. So Aegis gets reclaimed. They've still got the cheese available Poppy. for themselves. Oh, if he waved the other side, he would have actually seen the TP out. Doesn't happen, though. Smoke now purchased up by Clock. Is it is it time to come and fight? Or is he just holding on to it? Probably hold on to it, wait for an opportunity, but... It's, it still just feels a bit hard for Fnatic to take the fights in. They really have to use their BKBs at the maximum. Because I feel like if they get kited out during those BKBs, the fight becomes super difficult for them. And it looks like Seeker might actually be the ones who are grouping up and looking for a fight. Well, they, they have double Invis. The Invis are in on the Earthshaker and then the Ghost Walk of the Invoker. And they are looking towards the bottom lane because the Observe Ward scattered out the Ember Spirit moving down. It didn't really see much more than that. That's why this Observer and Sentry of Fnatic doesn't really catch much information either. Look at the positioning. Yeah, they, they know. They, they know the Team Secret want to fight. Like, they're not even... Like, the scans are on cooldown for both sides, so they can't even use this to check. They're just putting Universe on the front line because he's got 74 HP regen per second with a BKB. The only downside is he's got, he's got uh, very low armor. He actually backed off getting the Assault Curas, and now he's uh, queued up a, a Scythe of Ice, which is kind of surprising when you when you still got the double Shivas still on the way for Fnatic. But Team Secret, they walk under they walk under the Observer and Sentry. Secret's ready to fight. There goes your Sentry Ward. If they put... Yeah, they get Vision on the hill. So goodbye, Observer Ward. Fnatic lose the Vision coming into this fight. They are smoked up. The Tier 2 tower's already gone down. And they have it. You, you can see them. You can see them backing up and moving forward. They are very uncertain they want this. And they're not going to take it. That creep way pushing into the Tier 3 tower on bottom will reveal the fact that they are smoked up. So, no other choice. They have to retreat. So you can get getting a bit in, a bit more out of the map during all this 4k advantage now. They've got level 25 Lone Druid, so he's got that double spell immunity when he shifts into true form. And getting themselves some bigger items too. Yeah, all these levels adding up. Potentially waiting for Roshan. He's, uh, he's 45 seconds away from potential respawn time. And it will be a last item as the Hurricane Pike for now for Ace. Just that distance that we're mentioning versus the Razor. Mm -hmm. Keeping himself away from that Atrophy Aura too. Keeping himself away from Eternal Envy. <laughs> and anything which can break a Static Link, you'll take it. Anything that can push you out of the Clockwork Cogs, you'll take it as well. And they're just waiting for Roshan. Like, he's not up yet, mid one. Can't even be, it's not even possible for him to be up yet. Secret Team pretty happy though with the pace of the game. Fnatic, they're looking like they are wa they are wanting to pick some fights, but Secret, they're they're kind of staying grouped up. They're not really like forcing the issue. 
They're just, they seem very co cool and collected. They even pick themselves up now at gem. It's good to clear out that vision, try to take a better fight. Roshan time is at two minutes. So that's how long we have to wait for that. But you can see Fnatic starting to swarm around, but also Team Secret on the dire side of the river inside their jungle, smoke up, looking for an opportunity. They saw Universe push out with their ward. Yep. But they may be walking rap. into a trap and they know it. Around the back, they need to be grouped up. Lone Druid's a little bit too far away. But who can they find? Eternal Envy is the closest target. Scan is only available for the Dire side at the moment. They take the, the four of them take the long way and Puppy, the sacrificial They're lamp just runs in. They're coming for Ember. They have to silence him instantly, but they've got to get through the Lincoln Sphere. They're able to do so. Silence and Hex with the stun. Woo! Goodbye, Abed. 90 seconds on the sideline. Someone has to TP home. <laughs> They're going to lose their tier 4 tower if they don't do it. The never-ending thorn in the side of the team who seem to be dictating the, the terms of this map. Mm -hmm. They are getting, they are getting further and further ahead though. Envy is not really getting decent farm on this razor. He's now fallen. He's pretty much tied up with Fada's Dragonite. Like Fada's actually just popping his Elder Dragon form just to push out lanes now at this point because they're not, they're, they just feel very confident in the fights. And mid one's turned into a ward. He was uh, sitting inside the pit for about 15 seconds. An Invoker not moving for 15 seconds, not farming, not doing anything, just watching Roshan. Full Scardi is now on the lone Druid. Ace buying out for all of this as well. Like so he's changed his item from the Hurricane Pike. <laughs> yes, he changed his item from the Hurricane Pike. Tanking up. Well, he's hard to kill. 2.6k when he's in range form. They're looking towards a bit. If they can bring down a tier 3 tower and start picking up these shrines, then Roshan becomes a lot easier for them. And he's up in 14 seconds. The Roche with all their BKBs just seems Alacrity quite easy there. for Secret. Plus 224 fortification. What a surprise. It's going to be triggered. I like how it gives your Alpha Wolf as well that I. Uh, Match community. Leave no man behind. No bear, no beast. The bear wants to keep pumping. Ace. Okay, there it is. They back up. Now they can take out the shrine. You, you see it being pinged Instant quickly pings. too. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's let's take this out and then secure Roshan. But they got to scout the Rosh because I think if they just commit for the Rosh, it dies in such a fast pace. Yep. And this is the refresher shard Rosh too. So Fnatic need to, need to bump this mid lane out a little bit more. Smoke and go. Actually, do they even have? I don't no, see one on any of them. No, they don't. They don't have a smoke available. So, so for, claiming high ground. Uh, the rocket's scouting out most of it. Uh, so they get they get information from this. Fnatic going the long way around. Up through the river. The rocket will reveal the angle. Not to mention revealing puppy. Doesn't see much more than that. Too many invis hero sentries are going down. The pit of mouths catching Fada. He'll go invis with the Shadow Blade up into the trees. Sentries on perfect positioning in the lane. The Creek Wave started attacking Fada. He walked right into it with the Finger of Death. Hookshot keeping out Yapsaw, so he can't really help. But the DK's alive at the moment. Eternal Envy in the thick of it, but the Echo Slam! At least it keeps Fnatic on the back lines, but Envy slowed down, but it's still not enough. BKB's being burnt massively. Envy's but blink But only, only the ES dying. Envy's Blink did work there. He closed the gap onto Ace and he got like 157 damage or so, so they actually were a bit afraid to fully engage into the fights because Ace is majority of their damage because Fada got brought so low. They're looking to fight top. Ember Spirit mid very one. quickly back to the Spirit and mid one's in trouble. Support is there from Ace, but the stuns, they chain long enough. Invoker, do you want to buy back? The Static Link is on Ace. They're on the run out of here. Fada's pushing in the top lane while all this is going on, but there's 280 points of damage stolen by Eternal Envy. He just wants to hit Ace once, but Ace still walking around with a cheese. Envy blinking inside the base. He gets feared out. Can Puppy hold him in here? He's got Swap available, and he'll swap him out. And the Tornado, no return ticket punch by Eternal Envy. Instead, he'll be punched down by every single member of Team Secret that's Puppy's, alive. Puppy's swaps this game are out of control. He saves Fada in the mid initially. Gets him away from the rift there. Now they can actually go for that Roche with that buyback from mid one. They do lose their tier four tower though. Yeah, they'll lose their tier four tower. There's still buyback possibilities as well from Eternal Envy. And you know him, he'll buy back if they feel they can get, take a good fight. Just getting him to the front lines is the hard thing. The rockets from Clockwork are almost exclusively on the Roche pit. This bottom lane just continues to be that problem though. Yeah, so now struggling to push it in. Mid can use Clockwork Rockets. They need to get rid of these Observer Wards. Both sides got really good aggressive wards down. Now the gem is in the hands of DJ. And that's the gem of Poppy. 
That's why all that aggressive vision from Team Secret is gone. And Fnatic have the aggressive ward up near the Secret Shop. They got one down the lane. They got one on their defensive higher ground near, near in front of Roshan. And now the smoke maneuver in through the rear. What do they find underneath it? Underlord, he's going to break it. Universe and Arbed nearby. They'll get rid of the bloody orbs, but Rocket back into Roshan. Tense time. The creep wave on bottom is coming back once more. They're starting. They're starting Roshan with the negative armor. They've got to be so quick about this. How fast can Team Secret do this? Fnatic not in there yet. The BKB's up for Ace. They see it. DJ, he's looking for the hook line. Puppy looking to block it as well, and he does so perfectly. And Fada and Puppy, they're out here as the gang squad. So Roshan, it goes the way of Team Secret, plus all of his gems and jewels. That's a pretty fortunate DD room spawning outside the pit. Plus 579 on the Lone Druid, able to bring down the Roshan in a matter of seconds. But again, Puppy in the right place every single time, it seems, in this game. And they may try and push this out. Fada's still got the Dragon form for a decent amount of time. Ace making the most of the push time as well. He's got two cheeses in that Lone Druid, plus the Refresher Shard. I'm not quite certain he needs that. I think Fada needs that for his Dragon form. He can cheese and then refresh the second cheese and use it. Neat. He gave the cheese to Fada. <laughs> so mid one looks like he's going to buy boots to travel, join his team in the mid. Swap, Swap puppy. stun. So long, Envy, he's gonna go down. 100 seconds, buyback is available. Fada gonna attack in. The Pit of Malice slows it down. Here comes your buyback from Eternal Envy. The melee racks will fall. Fada's taking care of the range racks. They're gonna rotate up towards the top. They want two lanes of racks. They'll take the tier three tower very easily. Lone Druid going into his big bear form. He knows the timing, the BKBs being burned. Oh and now God. it's gonna be Universe that gets mopped up. He was meant to be the big ass tank, but now they jump in deeper. Eternal Envy, BKB will protect him alive to see a lot of damage Secret out of the hands dying. of Ace. But this is the problem. Yeah, the throne is going down, but there goes Slam! Yapsaw jumps in! Goodbye, Pile I Die! And goodbye, Eternal Envy! Two minutes on the sideline. Universe, he's going in! He's going for the GG! He's on the back of the range creep! Up is here as well! Fnatic are actually doing this! They're going for the full GG! Mid one's come for the defense! Hey, Morbid Cage is not there! Fnatic have done it! They've gone in through the rear! And they have actually secret in the full series two to one shit what just happened that bottom <laughs> even puppy you see puppy just says i can't believe that we... what an ending what an ending they saw the opportunity they saw the moment secret committed and fanatic that range creep was on one fifth health when they went to it. That was the one. That was the chosen range creep with the creep wave in through the bottom. I was calling it the thorn on the side of Team Secret for so long. It seems like it was but more it was than a thorn. It was a broadsword. Yeah. Oh my god. I have no poison words. Poison blade. Poison blade. No words. Oh, so Fnatic. Fnatic have actually done it. They are able to push their way through Look, a 2-1 victory. <laughs> and and music, I can't believe it. I uh, you saw Pilot Eye at the Holy end, too. It's just like, oh, man, secret, stretch your heads. How the hell did that happen? They get second place in the group because of this result. So Fnatic get the berth into the semi-final, topping the group, joining the side of VG Gaming. They will play. I got, no oh. words. I got no words, Toby. That, yeah. was an un that game was just back and forth all over the place. Adjustments being made all over the game, and then they lose because some creeps. All right, let's throw, let's throw it to people with words. I agree. Hi, panel. Break it down. Vodafone presents the post-match. All right, well, <laughs> I'm out of breath. The panel's out of breath. I promise you, we are really out of breath up here. What an extraordinary end to an extraordinary day of Dota 2. The very best game saved until the end. And no one knew which way it was going to go right up till the very last few seconds of it. What a brilliant way to end the day. A fantastic victory for Nanak as well. Uh, where do we start with the panel? Let's find out from our men on the panel right now. Alan, what do you say? I, I I don't know how I don't know after how many Dota games I've ever heard Toby One speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was unbelievable. I, and thank God that I did a little vocal training because I would be dead glad you right did. now. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did. Uh, Will the halfway to your to your demand. So I actually didn't get to watch the end of that game because we were running up here. Indeed. 
in I was like, okay, well, so well, you were walking. Let me just rephrase it. You were walking back. Kev and I were running, running back because yeah. we stayed to see the end. Yeah, I was like, chill. I was like, all right, well, Envy <laughs> died without buyback. It's time to uh, go do my job. And then I start. It wasn't just you guys. It was I heard somebody. I I heard people screaming yeah. from the player area because I think they were also getting hype in that. And then that kind of ruined. I was like, they would only scream if. Something yeah, crazy yeah. as one. I'm going to get more from no. you in just a moment. Um, we're going to try and catch our breath up here. Uh, in the meantime, Shiva, save us, please, with an interview with the winning captain of Fnatic. Ooh, Envy, that was that was crazy. I'm just I'm just going to ask, what, like, what was that like? like? Yeah, we are we are live. I'm going to ask like, what was that? The final uh, the final seconds uh, of that no, game. No, no, no. I was just like, I, I ran and I'm no buyback. I died. I was like, oh my god. And I was like, all right, our free time, our free time. I ch I checked bottom. I see the throne. I'm like, the throne, the throne, the throne. And universe like understood like he like he he, he like I, I didn't tell him the TP, but he understood what that meant. And he just fucking traveled there. I, I told the Ember to travel there, but then universe has like the go the other travel. So he like ulti there and he just took the throne. I mean that that was a crazy ending on itself. Obviously that third game was very clutch. It was very close to to not happening. But let, let's go back a little bit because I want to go to that second game. According to the panel, that was a draft win for you guys. Were you feeling the same way? Oh yeah, we we definitely had the superior draft. Um, the the only problem was that the invoker would destroy our Ember mid, but then our Ember like uh, he understood that he he would lose mid and he started running around in circles and he, he got a lot of kills, and so like, he actually made use of his like lane losing matchup by making moves on the map. It was really good. So you won against Team Secret. You have a little bit of a history, of course, with uh, Team Secret and also with Puppy. Does it feel extra good to beat Team Secret? No, <laughs> it really doesn't. Um, I, that's like way in the past to be honest, way too long ago. Okay, well, how about like this entire series, looking back at it, making top four, uh, you've lost well, six weeks, you've had six weeks with, uh, with the current team, how does it feel for you to be here and do as well as you are? Uh, it feels really good, like, um, like uh, it, it was very hard for us to get the team to understand like what we need on the team, and I feel like we, we finally like understand what we need to, to play at our best, like for the individual players on this team. And yeah, we were able to show it this tournament. Yeah, top four, congratulations. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I know you want to get back to your team, so I'm going to let you go. And uh, we'll see you in, uh, in the arena. Thank you very much. I'm back to Paul. Yeah, thank you, Chiva, uh, for the interview. And uh, we're going to dive straight into the highlights uh, of this third and final game. What a fantastic victory for Eternal Envy and Fnatic. A lot of doubters out there and a lot of people, well, actually just two people here on the panel who were on the hype train and paid for their tickets and were choo-chooing along. Well done, Kev. That's me, yep. Yep, yep. totally full confidence. Yep. Thought they were gonna win. Totally. These Absolutely. doubters on the end, who I, were they? I really liked what uh, Envy said, though, about uh, how bad the matchup was gonna be for Ember versus Invoker, but the way that Abed played it, despite that matchup being so awful, was amazing. Like, he just kept dodging ganks. He kept barely staying alive. He made them really work for all the harass and all the kills. And I feel like that's only something that maybe four, player, four to six players in the world can do. Mm. Yeah, incredible. Your, your okay. kind of speech is still at? looking at stuff over there. Right? What's going on? Fnatic's heroes combined in that game did 4.2k building damage. That's less than three towers. Yeah. That <laughs> Creeps OP. <laughs> yeah, the, the dire bot lane was the MVP. They did yeah, every yeah, car. Dire bot car. lane was MVP. That's a, I've never seen that. I, I, yeah. I don't think I've seen a team win doing that. It's funny, actually, because when you, when you watch some of the highlights, you will occasionally just, it will just wander over the bot lane, and you'll just see a few more yep. creeps yep. chugging closer and closer, and then the, that tower goes down. They, I think they went back for that as well, didn't they, to save the tower at the end? Yeah. I, I just, I'm watching the replays, and I can't believe the game's yeah, not over right go. there. It's, and here's the end of the game. I think it's the most influential single Rax ever. Yeah. I think it's safe to say, because it happened so early and it was so slow, it, the camera would go back and, oh, they killed a little building. And actually, it's called building. It's not important, but it's a yeah. building. And then slowly but surely, in the moment where they'd I mean, almost lost, they the had got The two towers are still up the other HP? lanes. Yes, yeah. they are. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, you, only, yeah, you don't even need to kill all those. The objective based Dota, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I mean, never to an extreme, they, I think. They hadn't been there since the 20 minute mark, and Secret played amazing. And Ace's items looked real bad at 15 minutes, but it yeah. ended up being incredible. Yeah. Like his farm speed, the fact that his bear wasn't just countered by like Firestorm and dead at the start of every fight, he actually did tons of damage. Like Secret played that really well. That's yeah. why they looked so disappointed. They yeah. knew they had that game, they played better, yeah. but they lost the game yeah. just because Did, well, they lost the Rex. Is, is there any criticism that you have, Will, uh, uh, not watching that bot lane very often, not clearing it out, not pushing it in? The thing is, it's really hard to like think about stuff like that because in the moment, you're like, oh, we're winning fights. 
us. Who cares if our tier three is taking our tier four is taking a little bit of damage? We'll we'll stomp him in the fights. We're starting to turn the game around, and it's honestly something that you just don't think about because uh, in the moments there's so much happening in a Dota game, and it becomes chaotic and stressful, and that gives uh, even more credit to to Envy and his squad because they noticed it. In that moment, all you're thinking is Envy doesn't have buyback, like the game's yeah. done. Yeah. And to have that kind of like clarity in that moment and say like, guys, we actually just want, like, go. So are you saying yeah. that Envy dying and running and dying twice was a benefit? Yeah, that's the crazy part <laughs> as I was thinking about yeah. because genuinely they might not have, it didn't look like they noticed that because if they had, they would have gone 20 seconds earlier, but yeah. Envy dies and then he's got all the time in the world. He's like, oh, I guess I lost. And then you just, you know, you do this with your map and then you see, oh crap, we're actually going to just win. Mm. Okay, uh, let's uh, check in with our play wow. faster moment from Vodafone. Uh, we've been checking in all day long, checking on those first blood, seeing who's coming up first. Let's check in and see what won day number three. Is it the mid one? That's not it, that's me, but we'll bring it to you momentarily. There we go. Uh, is it the mid one? It is the mid one, first blood. He deserves all the credit for that. It was that's only the fastest one we've had of the week, by the way. Wow. It's 44 okay. seconds before the horn. Very nice. So, yep, play faster with Vodafone. Today's highlight is mid one. Well done to him. Uh, we'll wrap up and we'll talk about the uh, remainder of the game. Just final thoughts on that game, and we'll also take a look at the two brackets in just a moment. Alan? I think you have to give MV Envy MVP of that series. I think he gave them distinct draft advantages in both of the games that they won. I think the shot calling was on point throughout. And like he said at the very end in that interview, that it's such a benefit to have these veterans on your roster that can make their own reads. Okay. Well, uh, I think Abed, pretty clearly for me, I felt like he went above and beyond in the series. His invoker in game one, uh, he played stellar in game yeah, three. Yeah, it was a brilliant he, play, wasn't it? Yeah. And I think even more impressive than that, a lot of a lot of players can just snowball to a win. Like a lot of mid players can, but being able to come back in game three, having a rough matchup, having a lot of difficulty on your side, and still being able to create that kind of space, I think is even more impressive than just simply snowballing to a win. I felt like Abed did above and beyond in this series for his team. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm just feeling for a secret a little bit because uh, that's going to be one of those games that they yeah. remember, honestly, for the rest of their lives as a, as a moment of pain yeah. <laughs> uh, where, where they lost in a game that they were sure they'd won. Um, so uh, it was a great series, really great series to finish. Good news for them in one way is that they are still top six. They are in the quarterfinals. There's another shot for them. There's still a road to the final. At least that's there for them. Um, we also have to say congrats, Fnatic, because they're going to pick up DPC points. That's really important for them right wow. now. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Prove the haters wrong. Uh, yeah, for a, for yeah, a, well. a roster that was so <laughs> controversial, right? <laughs> I, yeah. You know, the, the idea, t replacing Ohio with the universe, you can talk about the difference in play style and which is more suitable, but that was a huge risk for them. Mm. And this has to feel vindicating yep. for that squad. No, absolutely. It's a big big move for them, big, uh, big set of points for them as well. Uh, let's bring you right up to date with the group stage. It's almost complete, almost, not quite, and we'll tell you why in a moment. There's Group A, which is complete, and your top three. Vici Gaming, without dropping a single game, are through, or one, one game's a liquid, obviously, in the last round, but are all through the series. They haven't lost a single one. They're through into the semi-finals directly alongside Fnatic. Virtus Pro, however, do drop that one match. They will go into the quarterfinals in the bottom half of the bracket. Team Liquid making themselves big again. They will also be featuring in the quarterfinals alongside Team Secret uh, after a 2-0 win against OG. This is how Group B will look. Yeah, I think it's dawned on Alan what might be happening oh in the next round. Oh my God! Uh, Secret having lost that game against Fnatic in the upper bracket, will go to the quarterfinals as the seeded team. And will play the third place team from the other group, which you've probably worked out already, is Team Liquid. Uh, the other group B qualifier at the bottom isn't decided yet. That's EG versus Newbie, and that will be played first thing tomorrow. That'll be our first game tomorrow. So that's the result of what we've just seen. So it's, had, it's gonna reverberate now, isn't it? Because it's not just Fnatic making the semis, it's secret having to meet Liquid in the next round. So what you are telling me, Paul, yes. is that three out yes. of the big four, at yes. least, are playing in the quarterfinals yes. <laughs> and that Newbie might not even make it there. Absolutely. Did so I tell you this was a wide open absolutely. field? Absolutely. And they've still got to get past EG, which uh, talking of EG and Newbie, let's take a look at the schedule for tomorrow because they are in action tomorrow as part of the uh, schedule. We've only got two matches tomorrow, but we've also got the Liquid Secret game. 
just to finish things off. Only two series, but my goodness, they're really, really good series. That's because we've saved an extra game this time round. You probably were with us at Genting, and there were a couple on the Saturday. This time round, we've got three matches for you inside the Spodak Arena on Saturday. I'm going to get our final thoughts from our panel on a fantastic day number three. We're halfway through. Halfway! We've still got half to go. Uh, Kevin. I Highlight of the day for you. It was great to see Fnatic show up. They've proved that they deserve to, to have the winner issue that they did. Yep. Can't argue with that one. Alan? Oh, my God, this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Like, well, leave, leave it there. Good. Like it. Will, final thoughts? Uh, I hope neither the, like none of the teams get flamed or anything like that. Because this is just a good day at Dota. Like, everyone played yeah, pretty absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah, there's the no way. Well, why would anyone get flamed? Uh, it just happens. Like, the, the whole secret versus... Uh, Fnatic series like that was a coin flip series both teams played very well there wasn't any like huge throw these things happen yep. Yep. I hope fans of both teams are just satisfied that they got good Dota mm. neither of them got eliminated now you get an even more hype matchup in Secret versus Liquid I think uh, good day at Dota that's all I want as a fan alright good stuff thank you to all three of you thanks to everyone on the broadcast team today uh, has been a very long day but a very enjoyable day of Dota 2 here at ESL 1 Katowice the major always delivers never more so in the final game of the day congrats to Fnatic as they move on to the semi-finals and also to Team Secret we will see them tomorrow against Liquid with EG and Newbie heading our start for day number four thanks for tuning in we'll see you again tomorrow Standing strong. And this is what we're talking about. The Beastmaster yeah. so strong. Oh, the three-man telekinesis done as well. Holding them down. Samael is falling low, though. At least that's trying to get him. But as you say, just the damage that comes out from this Beastmaster. Way too much to deal with. They've got eyes on Katsu as well. They'll snowball across. We'll be able to cancel the out. But Samael throws out the axes and will get the triple kill. The question is, who are they sort of hoping to find off the back of it? Normally, you want to find a core, but... Do they even have the chance to kill a core? They're looking towards Arteezy if they can get the instant stun, maybe, and they do. They get the Epi, the Burrow, the Death Ward, everything down onto Arteezy, but he still gets the Rage off. Now he turns with the double damage, starting to lie still back up. He has the Infest as well, jumps into crit to protect him from the Death Ward damage. Arteezy will survive. Fear gets a triple kill. And torn away from them. Arteezy once more, and he goes. That will be the Tier 3 complete. Early. Mind control will be found out on the retreat. He's trying to get back to the shrine. Sal's up. Oh, is that going to save him? It will. The Sal between the hits buys him time. He turns with the Sprout, goes for the TP. He makes it away. Be good control over oh, someone like Tinker. There's no way against it. Ace is in real trouble. They actually just dropped the mass up more instantly. He's got no buyback. And this is over. Five heroes are basically falling. The buybacks are coming in thick and fast, but they're losing their base. The Look mass up more do the work. The Ravage will connect on four, but it's still not enough. The ice wall is down, and GG, well played. Back into the mid lane, they have the Ursa, they have to cut him, drop him down low, and Poppy in for the Echo Slam with the double down the cause, it's the timing, it's the moment, it's the kills, it's Team Secret. Locking it up, so many hits, the Fidget will connect the cogs, actually pushing the bear into the Universe. Two minutes on the sideline, Universe, he's going in, he's going for the GG, he's on the back of the range creep, up it's here as well, Fnatic are actually doing this, they're going for the full GG, mid one's come for the defense, Morgan Cage is not there, Fnatic have done it, they've gone in through the rear, oh and they God. have actually taken secret in the full series, two to one. Shit, what has happened?
life was all about following a few simple rules. 